Hi everyone and welcome to your daily devotional for Monday, May 18th, 2020. I hope this finds you doing well and staying healthy. And I hope that this will provide a space for you today to be in God's presence and in God's word. Our prayers today come from a resource called Let Us Pray, Reformed Prayers for Christian Worship. It is a publication of Geneva Press. Take a moment and relax as we prepare to be in God's presence. We begin today by turning to Psalm 93, and this reading and all of the readings come from the Common English Bible Translation. Listen now for God's word to us. The Lord rules. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed, clothed with strength. Yes, he set the world firmly in place. It won't be shaken. Your throne is set firm for a very long time. You are eternal. Lord, the floods have raised up. The floods have raised up their voices. The floods raise up a roar. But mightier than the sound of much water, mightier than the sea's waves, mighty on high is the Lord. Your laws are faithful. Holiness decorates your house, Lord, for all time. Let us pray. God, we confess that many times we find it easier to talk about you than talk to you. But then as we do begin talking to you in our prayers, we often find that talking is easier than listening. And then that listening is easier than doing something about what you are saying to us and calling us to do. Forgive us, we pray, for always trying to avoid the demands of your love. Break through our defenses and use us according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our merciful Lord, we pray. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. Listen for God's word. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, I am now setting up my covenant with you, with your descendants, and with every living being with you, with the birds, with the large animals, and with all the animals of the earth, leaving the ark with you. I will set up my covenant with you so that never again will all life be cut off by floodwaters. There will never again be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the symbol of the covenant that I am drawing up between me and you and every living thing with you on behalf of every future generation. I have placed my bow in the clouds. It will be the symbol of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will remember the covenant between me and you and every living being among all creatures. Floodwaters will never again destroy all creatures. The bow will be in the clouds, and upon seeing it, I will remember the enduring covenant between God and every living being of all God's creatures. God said to Noah, this is the symbol of the covenant that I have set up between me and all creatures on earth. The rainbow serves as a symbol for us of God's faithfulness and promise to protect us. What are your other favorite symbols for God's love? Our New Testament reading today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 27, verses 39 through 44. This is a continuation of the journey of Paul. Listen once again for God's word to us. In the morning light, they saw a bay with a sandy beach. They didn't know what land it was, but they thought they might possibly be able to run the ship aground. They cut the anchors loose and left them in the sea. At the same time, they untied the ropes that ran back to the rudders. They raised the foresail to catch the wind and made for the beach. But they struck a sandbar and the ship ran aground. The bow was stuck and wouldn't move, and the stern was broken into pieces by the force of the waves. 
The soldiers decided to kill the prisoners to keep them from swimming to shore and escaping. However, the centurion wanted to save Paul, so he stopped them from carrying out their plan. He offered those who could swim to jump overboard first and head for land. He ordered the rest to grab hold of planks or debris from the ship. In this way, everyone reached land safely. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In this story, the prisoners were viewed as expendable, their lives worth nothing. Can you think of other examples of where people have been treated as insignificant? Let us pray. Touch our lives, O oh God and give us the courage we so much need. Then strengthened with your powerful love, we ask that you use us to encourage others. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Friends, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace through the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, take care of yourself. I'll see you tomorrow.